We've been collecting questions from the internet for the last few weeks, doing our best to field Q&A so that we are talking about the things that you actually care about. So we got a couple of quick questions that I'm going to field this morning in hopes of giving greater clarity to everything that we're talking about. How do you interpret sleeping and waking dreams through a Christ lens? Great question. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm always saying the same thing, like I'm a broken record. But, but the truth is, the best way to interpret anything is through the lens of the New Testament scriptures. You've got to know that there's never going to be a moment where God tells you to do something that he expressly told you not to do in the New Testament. So sometimes people will say, well, hey, wait a minute. Peter had the rule changed. You know, those foods were unclean. Then he had a dream, and God said they're clean. Well, I know God said adultery is wrong, but then I had this dream. Anyway, now I'm with five women. That's the same thing, right? No, that's not the same thing. You, you're a bad person. Don't do that. <laughs> the, the, the truth is that the scriptures are our guide. And there are these crazy stories in the scriptures with which we have to wrestle, but that doesn't mean we get to invent our own crazy stories that allow us to change the rules continually in the way that seems best to us. So the best way to interpret your dreams or your waking ambitions is to study the scriptures, pray, and then get around other Christian people. Get around other people that love the Lord more than they love you, but still love you a lot. And ask them for their help. Uh, to navigate the way forward. Is there weight to the idea that specific dreams always mean spe specific things? I don't know, my friend Greg might be better able to answer this question and knowing more about, you know, dream interpretation than I do. Um, but no, that, that, feels, that feels a little far-fetched to me. Um, you know, the, the idea that if you always dream about... Uh, the color red, that that's your subconscious teaching you about a particular red associated thing. I, I, that, that seems like a bit of a stretch. I mean, sometimes, honestly, it's just bad pizza. Sometimes it's not enough sleep. Sometimes you're worried. Sometimes you're, you know, checking your email right before you fell asleep and, you know, the synapses in your brain are firing. Sometimes dreams are just dreams. Um, so I'm always hesitant to say the word always about anything, except that I'm always hesitant about the word always. How concerned should you be if you've had violent dreams and you're not a violent person? Uh, not that concerned. I mean, sometimes, some, sometimes we have bad dreams. Sometimes we're violent in our dreams. Sometimes people are violent toward us. Sometimes we're disobedient or rebellious or, 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 or act with disregard in our dreams. And sometimes we're, we're the recipient of those things. But, but the thing that matters is what you do when you're awake. The thing that matters to which you will be held to account that defines your relationships is how you deal with stuff while you're awake. And sometimes those, those dreams can kind of you know, stick in your mind and, and make you feel dirty or icky or haunted or whatever. Just take a moment and confess that's how you're feeling. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. Uh, you know, t take a minute and read a scripture or, or touch the pages of your Bible while you read through a few things. Stick something on your dashboard or your computer at work or uh, have it pop up on your phone. But, but re renew your mind and then just know that that, that, that stuff, that you're not on autopilot. Um, th those dreams do not control you. Even the good things that God puts in you, the good God dreams, they don't control you. They might give you a compass bearing, but you're still the one ultimately responsible for everything uh, that the Lord has required you to do. All right. Now, if you have other questions uh, throughout the week and you want to shoot them to ask Westwinds, use that hashtag. You can put them on Facebook or, or Twitter, and we'll do our best to field them. Because, again, we're, we're trying to do everything we can to help you learn how to make sense of the Jesus way in real life. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed the message. Uh, if you have any questions from the message, we'd love to hear them and we'd love to hear from you. Coming up in just a minute, we're going to have an interview with Dave where he's going to get some questions from Scott that you guys have submitted throughout the show. If you've been following the message and Dave is talking about Acts or something, or we're on the live show and we bring up something that you'd like to know more about, you can send us a question. You can send us a question on Facebook or on Twitter. You can use the hashtag AskWestWinds, and then we're going to look through all of your different questions, and then we're going to bring them up to Dave. You're going to get to hear from the man himself for anything that you want to know. 
If you've been watching the live show for the past few weeks, we've had some really amazing questions. We've had people ask about their faith. We've had people ask about a specific book of the Bible. We've had people ask things specifically about the seminar. We've had people ask about Dave's tattoos. Absolutely anything is available for you to ask. We just love to hear from you. So again, if you want to ask us any questions, you can do that on Facebook or on Twitter, and you can use the hashtag AskWestWinds. So now we have a few of your questions, and we have Dave and Scott in the studio. So we'd like to take it away to those guys to answer your questions. Hey, guys. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Dave McDonald. Dave McDonald. <laughs> Put your hands together. How was your flight? Good? My flight? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Flight in. Uh, yeah, yeah no, it was great. It was, yeah. it was, uh, I was delayed momentarily you know, at the, at the men's room, but I think I got it started out. So great sermon today. Um, God talking to Peter. Yeah. You know, and he's, he, with your sermons, there, there, there's always a three. There's always a three in there. There's three things I want you to take away from the <laughs> sermon. There, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's always three points you hit on, at least w when I'm paying attention. When I'm paying attention. <laughs> sure. Good. So, Good. why do you think God has to say something to Peter three times? Oh, man, I think that's a surprisingly small number. I mean, God usually has to say something to me 53 times or, or 73 times before I start paying attention. So even though Peter's always the heel in all the Jesus stories, uh, he's doing better than the rest of us. <laughs> so one of the poll questions today. Yeah. You know, have you ever had a dream and, you know, curtain rods excluded? Yeah, yeah. We got to talk about this. I know. Shower I know, thing. right? I want to dive deeper into that. Maybe we don't even have a place to put a shower curtain. Like, like ours is like one of those little, oh, you got like, a, like a hallway shower. You know that you can't even put a. Th so I'm, I'm messed up. I got to talk to Carmel. Go through her spending receipts. What's her problem? In an attic. <laughs> Somewhere where there's just a bunch I'm, of curtain rods yeah, and your shower curtain. I think you said an addict. Yeah, oh, yeah. I might, yeah, she might be a curtain rod addict. I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. She's making didgeridoos in the basement out of them and selling them on Etsy or something, you know. <laughs> Which honestly, if she's buying those to make didgeridoos, you uh, well, find yourself the cottage oh, industry yeah. or a cottage full of shower curtain rods, right too. So mm. I, the, the the poll question today: Have you had a have you ever had a dream that uh, mm -hmm. that 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 you feel God was talking to you? Have you yeah. had one of those? No, totally not. No, no. Okay. No. I, in fact, I, in fact, I, I, I mean, people will often ask me, "Hey, I had this dream. What do you think? You know, is it the Lord or is it is it just me?" And and I I can't actually think of a time where I said, "Yeah, I think that was the Lord." That doesn't mean that it never was. I just can't, you know, in, in my narrow-minded, overly rational way, I'm like, I think you're just nuts. I, <laughs> You know, I shouldn't have said that. Don't, often, don't put that on the internet. That's so unkind. You know? Oftentimes when people say, hey, tell me about Dave McDonald. Overly rational. <laughs> it's been one of the terms I have used on I don't know how many occasions. Overly rational. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's rationalizing everything. So yeah. do you think maybe when it comes to, because you, you talk about dreams and that being the conduit mm -hmm. uh, to which to which it's easiest, you know, the easiest mm -hmm. form of communicating, mm -hmm. like a teenager it might be sitting next to you and Mm -hmm. How are you? Can I talk to you? And then you send them a text and you get an answer. <laughs> right. So dreams would be the text to teenagers. I mean, how, how can one kind of open up their mind and, and, and actually listen to what? Well, I, I do think, okay, so, so even though I've, I've never said to anybody, yes, I think your dream is from the Lord, I do think he does speak that way. I just tend to think that the people who want to talk about those dreams are, are the, the people who need the guidance to know what God says and how God actually works. So when somebody will say to me, hey, I had a dream about a flying buffalo, does that mean the Lord wants me to open an airline? That, 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 which, that, that's a real question. <laughs> I go, no, I don't, I don't think so. However, there are people who have dreams or recurring dreams. And, and in these dreams, they might be doing something extravagant specifically for God, going to Africa as a missionary, for example. right? And, and then as they're awake, they feel this constant kind of haunting, this, this recognition in their own waking mind, like, I think I'm supposed to go to Africa as a missionary. That, that's a great example of like a, a compass bearing from the Holy Spirit. And then they would talk about it with their friends and say, hey, man, I, I think I got this thing. And, and, and could bear witness. Or conversely, somebody who has not a sleeping dream, but a waking dream to, let's say, open a youth center. That was one of Ben's dreams, right? And, and he just couldn't get away from it. He always felt like this was something the Lord had prepared for him to do. He would talk about it with his friends. I got this dream, Martin Luther King kind of quotation. And, and his friends would bear witness and go, yeah, man, I think that's, that's cool. That's what God wants. So for most of us, 
In order to get to a place where we can identify and recognize those dreams, we got to just start by asking, what do I think God wants me to do? Who do I think God wants me to become? And what's the gap between here and there? And then when you kind of start applying your sanctified imagination, you're going to realize the Holy Spirit sands stuff to you all the time. You just don't know how to listen to it yet. So, so it's a, a questioning and an answering. You, you talked about finding a group of friends to talk about those dreams. Mm -hmm. About uh, So basically what I took from that is you're not recommending, hey, I just had a dream that I felt came from the Lord. I'm going to act upon it without having discussed this with anyone. <laughs> right. That okay. Would, that, would be a bad, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> so honestly, what, where do you find that friend to talk about it with? Yeah, church. There are a thousand friends here. Um, I think that the, the relationships you develop on Sunday morning are a great starting point, right? Because how deep can you really get you know, for five minutes and a cup, of co a cup of coffee in the lobby? But that's why you get into a small group, a satellite group. That's why you go through an app or you take a class. You serve on a team so that those, those Jesus-centered relationships deepen. Mm -hmm. and, and then as they get deeper and more comfortable, th then you can talk about the real stuff, um, the, the stuff that's troubling you, the stuff that's staying persistent. Um, but, but those are the friendships that you have to cultivate. Um, by doing, you know, Jesus stuff, churchy stuff. So you're watching at home, and, and obviously this is something that you've, you've come out and you've said, you know what, I really, I'm interested in what's going on in Westman's, I just can't make it. I want to engage with someone, and you're not fortunate enough to be here with a coffee, so if you've got someone that is watching right now at home, yeah, you, right there, <laughs> talking to you, um, how can they get a hold of you or, or someone? How can they sure. then engage with someone to talk yeah, about yeah, something like that? Yeah, great question. Absolutely. Um, well, I think that's the beauty and, and the, the, the gorgeousness of the internets, right? Is that is that you can be watching online and sending a quick message to Dell or somebody in our live show team. We have those Monday night tweet ups where people are asking questions and we're having a live chat conversation. And of course, the internet is famous for people who aren't connected locally being able to develop very, very deep relationships through texting or messaging apps or, or, or online meetups or or Skype or Zoom or whatever. Um, so, so I would say it's not that you have to, you don't have to be in the physical building. When I say church, I don't mean the property. I mean the people. Um, get around the people of God, uh, because because six or eight close Jesus friends are going to give you a way different perspective than six or eight people who don't really care about Jesus at all. Yeah, that, that's an odd water cooler conversation at work. Sure. You know, it, especially with your boss. Which well, yeah. I had a dream. I had a dream. I think I should buy shower curtains and In, turn them into dirigeridos. Yeah, yeah. The the Lord told me, boss, that you're you're actually not very good at your job, and that I will be replacing you. That's uh, the Lord told me. It's a great way to meet your yeah. HR department. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've never met the yeah. HR person. <laughs> That is a wonderful way to do it. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please tweet them to us. Uh, you can tweet them. Use the hashtag uh, AskWestWinds. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Dave McDonald. Dave McDonald. <laughs>